welcome to my YouTube channel. Happy New Year! Happy Chinese New Year! Happy Lunar New Year! Xin Nian Kuai La! Also, welcome to the 2021 Los Angeles Dumpling Off. Every year I like to host a gathering with friends and we order a bunch of dumplings from different places. Some people make dumplings and bring their own and we vote on the best dumpling of that year. This year that's not possible so instead I will be holding a single elimination bracket style tournament to decide which is the best dumpling out of 11 dumplings from six different restaurants. There will be one judge, me. I'm gonna pause for a moment of acknowledgement of a bunch of restaurants that aren't included. And this is mostly just because I'm only able to eat so many dumplings in one night. The soup dumpling is probably my favorite dumpling ever, just as a dumpling format. It's a nice, classic dumpling skin with pork on the inside and then the pork is like sitting in soup broth so when you eat it you also slurp the soup out. I love Luneja soup dumplings. I love that it comes with these individual soup carrying trays. It's very convenient. Um, so let's get into it. So the Lunasia dumpling is delicious. The carrying tray is one of a kind. The skin is the perfect thickness. The juice flows nicely. It's like a nice light soup. It doesn't feel too thick or greasy or like too gelatiny. So Lunasia is a dim sum place in Pasadena and Alhambra. It's delicious. Pre-COVID, amazing place to get dim sum. Dim sum is like small dishes. So it's like a nice, family style selection of a lot of different foods and their dumplings are amazing. Okay, next up is Dan's dumpling. And I'm actually gonna use the Lunasia tray to catch the soup. I gotta say, this dumpling is not very good. The skin is like kind of thin and it just feels like there's not a huge distinction between skin, dumpling, and broth. It just kind of all melts together. And the taste just isn't in it for me. It's a no. So the winner of this round is Lunasia. Round two, the Trader Joe's round. I included Trader Joe's frozen pork gyoza in their chicken soup dumplings because I was curious, could Trader Joe's compete with the big boys? So first up we have the frozen pork gyoza. Pretty good, truly. It would definitely like a meal I would be down to have if I just wanted to like have a dumpling, not spend too much money and like have the comfort of a dumpling at home without spending too much effort. I think I'm just a bit of a dumpling snob because I got to grow up with really amazing dumplings that my mom made and I cannot cook those dumplings very well. So here I am consuming other dumplings, but the gyoza's not bad. Okay, next up is the chicken soup dumpling. I don't know. This is a super bias, but I'm not a huge chicken dumpling fan. And I think that's why this one's not hitting for me, whereas the pork gyoza still hits. So in the Trader Joe's round, the Trader Joe's pork gyoza wins. So this round is a little tricky because not only are these competing restaurants, these are competing dumpling formats. I'm sure I may anger people with this bracket. It's really not carefully formulated. So for that, I apologize. All right, first up, we're gonna have Lunasia's pot sticker. Mm. 
texture. There's a, a certain flavor that's so hard for me to place, but it immediately brings me back to just my favorite dumpling shops growing up and like a very cozy pot stickery feeling that's just, it's great. I just love it. But their pot stickers great. The skin is a little bit thin to my preferences, but it's crisp to perfection. This is a good dumpling. Mm -hmm. So this category is stacked. Uh, Mama Lou's and Lunasia's are both big hitters in the dumpling scene in Los Angeles. If you want good dumplings, you are going to go to San Gabriel Valley. Ellie's Chinatown has some winners, but overall it's just much smaller in scale compared to the diversity of San Gabriel Valley in terms of food and options. So little hack for you if you're coming to Los Angeles looking for dumplings you should post up there. The thing that makes Mama Lou's dumplings so good is the skin. It's just, it's really thick. And like, I can rely on it to not have any like blowouts. The juices aren't gonna explode on me. And it's chewy and it just provides a really nice texture against the dumpling itself. I love it. I really love it. Mama Lou's is a great place. They also have really good veggie fried rice, amazing string beans, a great scallion pancake, just super diverse menu. The winner for that round is Lunasia's pot sticker. This one was a tough decision to make. This one really was a tough decision, but I gotta give it to them. It just, the taste is like Ratatouille, Igor style, like brings me back to so many different memories I associate with dumplings. So it just, it has that nostalgia factor going for it. It has the like homemade feeling going for it, even though I don't think the skin is homemade. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of vegan dumpling options to the same degree that there are non-vegan options. There are a good amount of vegetarian options, but vegan dumplings I have found is trickier to find, or at least I haven't found as many dumplings that are explicitly labeled as vegan, but Pine and Crane came through. So this next round is Pine and Crane's vegan dumpling versus Dan's veggie dumpling. Let's go. Dan's pot sticker is definitely a traditional pot sticker. You can see a crispy skin. We love it. It tastes delicious. But wow. Just look at the size of the pine and crane dumpling. If we're just talking value, they are giving you as much bang for your buck. And pine and crane is just a hit. Again, pre-COVID, it was a spot I really loved going to. The parking is really bad. Um, so if you go, I would recommend taking the bus or be prepared to spend a lot of time finding parking. Here's Pine and Crane's dense vegan dumpling. The skin, the value, the amount of dumpling you get for the Pine and Crane vegan dumpling, amazing. The way this one is packed is it's very densely packed with what looks like glass noodles, some, some cabbages, just a lot of different greens. I'm not a fan. The skin is good, it's crispy. I like that a lot, but overall, it's not really steep competition for the heavy hitter that Pine and Crane is. Dan Veggie Dumpling, I taste it, and somehow I'm reminded of the absence of what I'm missing out on. Whereas the Pine and Crane Vegan Dumpling, it's not trying to be something it's not. It's like, here's something new and it's in, it, like, it can stand on its own two feet. So this round goes to Pine and Crane. Okay, next. So now we're moving on to shoop, heavy hitters, big heavy hitters. So these hitters, in part for bracket organization, they got a buy or is it a let? 
they got a buy for the first round just because it's like it would not have been fair to put up Din Tai Fung, Din Tai Fung against Trader Joe's. You know, like that's just like humiliating for all parties involved. So I just let these particular heavy hitters have a buy. It's kind of just, you know, they're seated very high in the dumpling off their previous winners. So we're going to start off with the Pine and Crane pork bun. Their pork bun is the only pork bun in competition versus Lunasia's soup dumpling. All right, incoming pork bun. All right, the pine and cream ones are delicious. But we already knew that. So really it's just a decide. It's just up to me to deliberate between Lunasia's pot stickers and pine and crane's pork bun. It's gonna have to be pine and crane. Woo! <laughs> This pot sticker and the Lunasia pot sticker are very close contenders, but let's be honest, this round, I think we all knew who the winner was going to be. The Pine and Crane pot sticker is just light years past the Trader Joe's Gyoza. The Trader Joe's Gyoza is obviously the best in terms of value and convenience, but the Pine and Crane pot sticker is just in another league. So. Pine and Crane pot sticker moves on. The reigning champ, the Din Tai Fung Shaolong Bao. The size, the skin, the soup. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Din Tai Fung has won this round. But I will say Lunasia's dumpling is a great contender. It's just, it's stacked when Din Tai Fung's iconic soup dumpling is in the ring. Okay, so next round, what's next? I've had all the dumplings. Oh! I'm so full. All right, in the final, the semifinals, it's Pine and Crane Pork Bun versus the Pine and Crane Dumpling. This one's gonna be tough because it's just all so good, but for being the only pork bun in competition, this pork bun, it speaks for itself. So moving on from the semifinals, is the Pine and Crane Pork Bun. So, it's come to this, the finals. The Pine and Crane Pan Fried Pork Bun versus Din Tai Fung's Juicy Pork Soup Dumplings. <sighs> Listen. I know we like an underdog story. I know we like when there's a surprise, but there's no surprise here. The winner of the 2021 Los Angeles Dumpling Off is Din Tai Fung. And listen, I'll be honest, I have a history with Din Tai Fung. We dressed up like Din Tai Fung a few Halloweens ago. I've had many a birthday at Din Tai Fung. It just, it's a special place in my heart. All of these restaurants are great, except maybe Dan, but I will try Dan in person to see if it has a redemption story. Um, but thank you so much for joining me for my dumpling off. This is a very special event that I miss hosting and I'm so excited to host it next year. Until then, happy year of the ox! <laughs> <laughs>